should. Ah! It's handles not very good. It's nasty. Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I'm currently turning this Mercedes Sprinter into an off grid, go anywhere, sleep anywhere kind of stealthy camper van and today i'm going to be building a bench seat now a lot of people have said to me we don't actually see you make anything mel so i'm going to film the entire process but don't worry i've already pre-cut the wood pre-drilled it all i've got to do is assemble it so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to assemble my bench seat in hopefully less than five minutes and i'm going to film the whole process and the only tools i've used to create this entire seat is one saw with a broken tooth, or two, do need to get a new one, and a power screwdriver, and that is it, just two tools and some wood and some screws, and I've created a whole bench seat, so let's get in the van and I'll put the whole thing together, hopefully in less than five minutes, if not I'll have to edit that little bit out. So this is where my bench seat is going to go, it's a real simple bench seat, a real simple design, like I always say, keep it simple, keep it safe. Now the purpose of this bench seat, other than sitting on, is also going to be to hide my cooler, and I want my cooler to slide underneath it, so the front of the seat is going to be open, but also I'm going to have it so it can lift up as well, just in case later on I change my mind and I want to blank it off at the front, that way it gives me the option of opening it and using it as a chest you can just chuck loads of stuff in there that way and my cooler i will then put underneath my fireplace now the height of this bench has got to be high enough for my cooler to fit underneath but low enough that my cushions don't come above the fireplace thus setting light to them <laughs> when it gets hot so i want it as low as possible but as high enough to fit my cooler underneath so i've put my cooler there I've drawn a straight line across there so I know how high that's going to be. So now we can get rid of that. Now the actual construction of the bench is going to be really simple. We're going to have four legs and a frame on top. As simple as that. And I'm going to put it all together, keep the camera rolling and you'll see how quick and easy this is. Right, so let's start. Four legs, one in that corner. Just put that crooked so it stays there. Um, this one in that corner there you go yeah we'll screw those in place first <laughs> so they don't fall over check the height of my screws because I don't want them going right through this not too far anyway so I'll get that nice and square <laughs> Just want to make sure those screws haven't gone right through. That we're good to go. That's golden. That one there. The same that side. Like I say, I pre-cut all these and pre-drilled the holes, measured it all just to save a bit of time on camera. Didn't want to put you through that pain of having to watch me saw wood with my broken saw. Luckily, I ran out of tiles when I was doing my fireplace, so I've got to go back down to the shop, get some more tiles, I'll pick up a new saw as well while I'm there. And then I shall carry on filming how I'm making my fireplace. That's why that's half finished. I didn't realise I'd need to go too high, so yeah. Anyway, that's another video completely. Oh, sorry about that. So that's my two back legs, so this is my back support. So far, so good. One of them in there. You see how simple this is? Now my front leg. This was the one I marked it somewhere. Did I? No, I didn't. <laughs> right, that goes that way around. There and there. There you go. See how it's going to come together? Actually, that's going to go that way. Now, oh, yeah, I'll show you this. The reason I'm using these thick pieces of timber for the legs, uh, find an off cut, be easier to find. So, this is 34 by 34. Same stuff as I use for my kitchen. These timbers are what I use for my bench. The nice thing about this, the top of this is exactly the same width 
of two of these put together okay so um, when I put them on the floor like this and use them as legs that goes across there like that no it don't it goes across that one there like that and then when I put that there it kind of it's all nice and symmetrical and flat as you can see so that's why I'm using this thicker wood for the legs right let's get a screw in there and hold that there and it'll make perfect sense actually I'll use a thicker one than that is that thick enough? Now I'm not attaching these legs to the floor just yet because I want to make sure it's all nice and square first. These are all going to stay floating. The only ones I've attached are the back ones. The one that goes here, I'm not going to attach that one either. Um, screw. I'm not kneeling on my... I need a kneel on this because my knees hurt. Screw in there. There's my off cut. I'm going to put this off cut on top make sure I get this in the right place so it's nice and level at the front if it will stay there that's it so I'm just using that off cut as a guide to make sure this goes in the right place so it's nice yep that's good good Side. Oh dear, hang on, your trousers. Are you timing this? Is this taking more than five minutes? Probably. I hope not. Goes like that. Again, I'm going to put that on top of there, move that in, just make sure that's kind of square like that. Looks like it, doesn't it? That's it. See how simple this is. And I've said it. I've said it. I don't know how many times I've said this, but you really don't need a big workshop, fancy tools. Just, just think about how you're going to construct stuff, and make it easy and strong. Obviously, this is on top, so that's strong. That's not going to. No fancy joints. It's just really simple. Four posts and a frame around the top. Come on, it don't really get much simpler than that. I'm going to put some more screws in it just to give it some strength. Double up on the screws at each end. Get in there. Right. So I've got two screws on each end of each cross member just to give it a bit of strength voila and there you go a really simple frame um, all I need now is the top be right back here's what I cut earlier there you go so that now is my bench seat done and I'm going to put hinges at the back, I'll have this slightly forward, some hinges on the back, then I can lift it up, get in, 
or I can also bring back my fridge into play. Should ah, these handles aren't very good. That's nasty. Well, that should fit under there as well. And there should be enough clearance for me to put laminate flooring down. There should be enough room, as you can see. And the reason for that, the reason I've got it right down on top of this, is because I want to put laminate flooring down. And once I put laminate flooring down, that'll raise the height slightly. Yeah. So, that should be just enough. So I can put a front on that if I want to, and use it as a chest. And this lifts up, I've got a chest bench traditional or I can just fix that down well, I'm not going to fix it down because I'm going to what I'm going to do now is get foam I need to get some foam cut to the size of this and then cover the foam and staple the covering to the back of this and that is, that is the easiest way to make any cushioning is to actually rather than try and make um, like a massive pillowcase if you like for your foam cushioning to go into Get some plywood like this, get your foam cut to the right size, choose the material you want to use. I mean, you could even use an old quilt cover, anything like that. Cover it over, fold the corners nice, slide it round, and then staple the fabric from this side. And then, hey presto, you've got, you've got your cushioning basically. So that's what I'm going to do with this. And once I've covered it, put the cushion on top, covered it, stapled it all round, I'll probably make a quick video about that. Then I'll set this on here with hinges, some little clips to stop it jumping up and down as I drive. And there you go, there's my seat. Simple as that. So let's talk a little bit about my fireplace. As you can see, it's half done. The reason it's half done is because I've broke some tiles. These tiles are super thick, super strong, and I did struggle to cut them, but I found a really neat way out to cut these tiles on the cheap as well. And no, not using me saw. I think that's not how I broke the teeth on me saw. Um, so if you want to see me finish off my fireplace once I've brought some new tiles, don't forget you're going to need to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss me finishing off my fireplace. Now before I go, I want to say a really massive thank you, like a real big thank you to Gary Harrod from Unistrut. After I made my Unistrut video about how to make a a roof rack, Gary sent me some uh, end caps free of charge as well. So thank you, Gary. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't seen that video, if you've not seen the video of me making my roof rack out of Unistrut, then please do um, check it out. I'll leave a link around about there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. And if you are new to my channel, do please consider subscribing. And by subscribing to my channel, you'll help me feed a cat. And I've got two, and they're hungry. Thanks for watching, and ta for now. <laughs>